Welcome to the Word of the Lord, the weekly television broadcast of Living Word Christian Church, proclaiming the good news of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Pastor Mark Clements' in-depth, relevant biblical teachings will help you in life and living in today's world. Now, let's join Pastor Clements in the service already in progress. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, hallelujah. And, and, and we read, and of course this is a great chapter, and, and I'm going to uh, give you a, a fair amount of scripture this morning, uh, and uh, much of it, much of it, uh, you may not have time to write down, we may not have time to, uh, to completely uh, exhaust uh, But we will have time to, to, to at least bounce along uh, on top of. And, and, uh, <clears throat> and share with you one of the great, great opportunities that's presented to every single solitary believer. Not unbelievers. Not unbelievers, but every single believer. Every single member of every single church. Every single member of the body of Christ should be presented with this opportunity because it's open. It's open to every single member of God's family. Uh, and that is an, an opportunity to serve in the ministry of helps. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, we read, and, and of course we can start, uh, we can start right up in verse 1 where it speaks about spiritual gifts. Uh, we, could, uh, we could get down to verse 4 that says there's diversities of gifts, there are differences of administrations, there are diversities of operations. Uh, and then we get over to verse 12, and it says, As the body is one and has many members, all the members of that body, are, being many, are one, so also is Christ. And, it's, and it goes on now and is talking about all the different members of the body. Uh, and... The word all is repeated again and again and again in verses 12 and 13. And then 14, he repeats that the body's not one member. And he goes through the hand and the foot and the eye and the ear and the smelling and the hearing and, and, and the head and the feet. And that's all the way down through verse 21. And, and he's using an example of a human body. A human body has all of these different parts, some external, some internal and, and they have different functions, but there's no part of your body that doesn't have a function, and there's no part of your body that's not necessary. And he talks a little bit there about the competition between parts, and really he's talking about a local church. He's not talking about your human body. Your eye and your ear have never had a conversation in their life. Your hand and your foot have never had a conversation in their life. But that's the example that he uses. The hand could say to the foot, the eye could say to the ear, and you're thinking, no, they couldn't. They don't have a mouth. They don't have vocal cords. They don't have the ability to speak. He's not talking about your body. He's talking about the local church is just like a human body with joints and tendons and ligaments and muscles and capillaries and arteries and veins. And you've got kidneys and a stomach and a liver and lungs. And you've got nerve endings and you've got an entire bone structure. And all of the different bones do their part. And you can't replace your femur bone with your L7, one, one of your lumbar uh, vertebrae out of your back. Uh, uh, everything is designed by God to fit together perfectly and join together perfectly and function together perfectly. Now, I, I don't know very many people whose bodies are functioning perfectly, but that is a reflection as well on the church. I don't know very many churches that are functioning perfectly. Most churches need an adjustment on occasion. Most churches uh, really need a little bit of medication from time to time, and some churches are just flat on life support. The body, the body is an example that the Lord uses. The Lord uses. Now, yes, the apostle wrote it, but he's just nothing but he's the secretary. The Lord is dictating, and the secretary is writing, and you get the letter. So he writes, he gives the example of the body, and he gives the example of all of the parts flowing into and functioning together and having a purpose. And it says in verse 24, God has tempered the whole body together. 
Verse 25, that there should be no division in the body. There shouldn't be arguments. There shouldn't be competition. There shouldn't be one person trying to fill another person's spot, one, one function trying to fill another organ's function. It ought to be just flowing together, no division, no strife. And, and if one suffer or if one is honored, verse 26, and then 27, you're, you are the body of Christ, members individually, and God has set some in the church, He's still talking about the church. He's still talking about the body. First, apostolic ministry. Second, prophetic ministry. Thirdly, teaching ministry. These are ministries that he said in the church. Apostles, prophets, teachers, miracles, gifts of healings, helps. Helps. And that's what we're going we're gonna, to gonna focus on. The helps ministry was not set in the church by some needy pastor that was tired of shoveling snow. The ministry of helps was not set in the New Testament church by the Apostle Paul because he was tired of responding to all the correspondence himself and tired of sweeping the floors once the service was over. The Apostle Paul was tired of being the choir director up in the front, running the adult Sunday school class, leading the youth group, and printing the bulletin. But that's what a lot of pastors do. That's what a lot of pastors do because there's been such a lack of teaching. I, I, I've heard teaching my whole life on the apostolic ministry, and that's usually relegated to missionaries. The prophetic ministry, that was kind of spooky and nobody talked about it. And so the teaching ministry, the miracle and healing ministry, of course, that went away when the last apostle died and was only for the early church anyway. But you never heard anything about the helps ministry. You never heard a word about the ministry of helps. I didn't. I didn't, and, and, and people have asked me, all right, you just got done doing an, a, 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 a message on the Nethanim. Did it here at Living Word? Did it last this past week uh, at Dr. Barclay's conference? Uh, and asked the question, how many of you have ever heard a message on the Nethanim? Not one person. And then finally, two people lifted, right over here, kind of lifted their hand up in that conference, and I think I did maybe one time. I said, all right, all you preachers in the first two, three rows, all the whole building full, how many of you have ever done a series on the Nethanim? Not one person. How many of you have ever needed one message on the Nethanim? Not even one person. And yet that was the ministry of helps. It was instituted in the day of Joshua. It lasted for 1,500 years, according to Hebrew historians and scholars, for 1,500 years from the day of Joshua in 1410 B.C. all the way through the day of David and the day of Solomon and all the way through the Old Testament prophets, all the way through the 400-year gap between Malachi and Jesus, all the way through the Gospels, all the way till 70 A.D. when Rome completely obliterated the temple and all of Jerusalem didn't lay one stone left upon another and totally destroyed the city. Only then did the Nethanim stop functioning, and the Nethanim were the Old Testament ministry of helps. They're mentioned 18 times in the Bible. They're mentioned 17 of those times in Ezra and Nehemiah, and the Nethanim were the people who volunteered. They were not called like the, like the priests were called, no choice in the matter. They were not appointed like the Levites. Porters and singers were a component of the Levites. They weren't appointed like them. Like our, like our New Testament deacons and elders. They just stepped forward and said, wait a minute, we want to serve. We want to serve. We want to do something in the house of God. The first job they were given was to carry water and to cut, split, and carry wood. That was their job, carry wood and carry water. They said, we don't care. We'd rather carry wood and carry water than do nothing. David said, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of God than to do nothing. I'd rather just hold the door open, just turn the doorknob. And just, just, and that's, I'd rather do that. And then they came and they said, we want to serve. We're not, we don't have to serve. We're not appointed to serve. It's not an expectation on us. It's not because we were born into this family. We don't have a choice in the matter. We want to serve. And you've never heard one message about that. Well, why is it so hidden in the Bible, Pastor? Why is it so well camouflaged? Why is it put in there? I'll tell you exactly why it's put in there. For the last days, that's why it's put in there. That's what your Bible says. Your Bible says right here in 1 Corinthians, the second chapter, eye hath not seen, ear hath not heard, neither has entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love him. How many of you have ever heard that? Yeah, you usually hear it as a standalone verse. Nobody's ever seen, nobody's ever heard. But, but, but the next verse says, but God has revealed them to us by his spirit. Whoa, whoa, eye hasn't seen or ear hasn't heard and never has entered the heart of man things God has prepared for them that love him. But God has revealed them to us by his spirit. The Spirit searches all things, even, even the see, deep things of God. They're not hidden from us. They're hidden for us. Yeah. I, use the, I use the weak example of, of what they call the straw pile at the fair. I don't know if they, they still do it. They did it out of straw, and they did it out of sawdust. 
And all the kids got around it, Philip. All the kids got right around it, and they had a little line drawn out there, and, and you had to stand, and usually you got your toes over top of the line like this, and you're looking around. And then when they blow a whistle or, 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 or bang, shoot a gun up in the air like starting a race, all the kids go dive in there. Why? Why would you dive in a sawdust pile? Why would you die into a straw pile? Why would you do that? Because it's full of stuff that's hidden in there for you. Candy. Yeah, all kind of things are hidden in there for you. Little prizes, little trinkets, little gadgets, $5 bills. Oh, now I got some of your attention. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. what'd you say? Ah, $20 bills, silver coins, yeah, dollar coins, and things like that. And then they were all hidden in there for you. Well, they weren't hidden from you. At the appointed time when the whistle blew, everybody who wanted to, now some people would just stand back and say, well, it's not the will of God for me to have any of that. If God would have wanted me to have it, he'd have put it right up on top where I could see it. No, some people have got it straight. You've got to dig for the things that God's hidden in this word for you. You have to dig, and you cannot do it without the anointing. It's, it's designed so that it takes the anointing to be able to dig those things out and then connect the dots. And not only just tell you what it says, but as, as Nehemiah chapter 8 says, make sense of it. Give you, give you the sense of it. You can't do that without the anointing. It says it right there in that same second chapter. You can't do that without the Holy Spirit's help. And so right there in our Bible, all of these days, all of these years, all of these decades, there's been a truth. There's been a truth of, of a group in the, in the tabernacle and then in the synagogues and then in the temple in Jerusalem that there was a group of people who had leadership who the book of Ezra calls ministers in the house of our God. Who, who Nehemiah said, stood up and said, we will love this God, we will serve this God, we will worship this God, we will never forsake the house of this God, and we will serve in his house all of our days, all of our generations, because we desire to and want to. And that lasted for 1,500 years. They didn't just do it for two years and then say, okay, I fulfilled my obligation. They didn't just do it for three years and then say, well, I'm kind of burned out. They didn't just do it for five years and say, well, I think it's time I step back and somebody else, you know, pull their weight for a while. They said, we're going to do it for all of our generations, and our kids did it, and our grandkids did it. How many generations ago for 1,500 years? And the only way, reason they stopped is because the temple was destroyed by the enemies of God. The only reason they stopped. That's in your Bible. In your Bible is all of the revelation on the ministry of helps that we have today, and it's been there for the last 2,000 years. Okay? But only in our lifetime has it come to the surface. Only in our lifetime has it come to a place of prominence. Only in our lifetime have books been written about it and tape sets and CD sets. And only in our lifetime have there been conferences to tell people that you don't have to just come to church and it just be one more element of your life. And it just be what you put, you know, it's, it's two hours of your life and you've got your job and you've got your family and you've got your recreational hobbies and you've got all of these other elements of your life and church just happens to be one part of them. This truth goes so much deeper than that. This truth goes to why you were created, why you even exist, what God's purpose for you is. Not just his plan for your life, but his purpose for you being that stretches on into eternity, that's going to be determined and decided to a great degree what position you hold there based on the performance that you provide here. And if God's house is nothing more than just a side issue, and if God's work and God's service is something you fit into your busy schedule, and you're more interested in your own personal interests and personal pursuits than you are in the purpose for which you were created, that'll be reflected in eternity. But when you look at your Bible and you see a truth like this and a, and, and a revelation like this, uh, that, that everybody was created to serve God. Everyone was created to serve God, not just in the garden. But when the second person came into the garden, they were given Eve. She was given a ministry right beside his that didn't complement his ministry. She didn't get a ministry. He said, okay, uh, here's your ministry, uh, Adam. Uh, dress and keep the garden. All right, got that. Dress and keep the garden. Name the animals and the birds. And it's not good that you're alone. I'm going to pull out of you in form and fashion and create a helper. A what? A helper. Not another worker. Not another minister. A helper that's suitable to be your companion. And he created Eve and gave Eve to Adam. You know, just read your Bible. The Levites were not placed and appointed to serve in the, in the temple. They were given to the priests. The Levites were given to the priests. 
That's Bible vernacular, book of Numbers. When the Nethanim stepped up and said, we'd like to serve, they were given to the Levites. What the Bible says. They were given to the Levites to help them. To help them. To help them. Not to work beside them, to help them. No, he didn't, he didn't create Eve and say, okay, uh, he's going to dress and keep the garden, you go dress and keep the forest. One of these days I'll have a chainsaw invented. You get to dress and keep the forest while he dresses and keeps the garden. And he's going to name the animals and the birds, you name the fish and the plants and shrubs and flowers and trees. I mean, come on, hibiscus, you know a woman named that. <laughs> Daffodil? Come on. Some guy didn't walk up and say, that's a daffodil. That was a, you know that was a woman. No, he didn't say, he didn't say okay, I'm going to give you a ministry, and just like it's his ministry. He didn't say any of that. He said, you're going to help him fulfill his ministry. That's what the helps ministry is. You're going to help him fulfill his ministry. That's what helps ministry is. And people get, get it all. They, 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 okay, now I've got my ministry. And now, now, no, my ministry, my ministry, me personally, Mark, David, Clements, born 13060, Hazel Green, Wisconsin, pastor of Living Word Christian Church. This isn't my ministry. My ministry is to help the Lord Jesus Christ fulfill the will of God in his ministry. That's, that's just my job. That's my responsibility in ministry. Helping him, assisting him. And in doing that, here's my call. Here's my call. All right, pastor, what's your anointing? You're going to pastor and teach. And here's your call. Develop God's people for working in the ministry. Where's that found? Help me, somebody. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians 4 and verse 11 says, And he gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be, pa some to be evangelists, some to be pastors and teachers for the perfecting of God's people, for the developing of God's people, for the maturing of God's people, for the growing up of God's people, for the equipping of God's people for work in the ministry. For work in the ministry, for the edifying, for the building up of the entire body of Christ. For the entire body of Christ. Well, I'd like to get off on teaching on the evangelist sometimes and how badly we've warped that. The evangelist is not supposed to go and hold tent meetings and get the lost saved. That's not the evangelist's job. The evangelist's job is the perfecting of God's people to work in the ministry, just like the prophet, just like the apostle, for the edifying of the body of Christ, not the salvation of the world. That falls on all believers. That ministry is a ministry of reconciliation given to every believer. You're the one to be holding the tent meetings. Hallelujah. All right. Don't want don't to get, get off too far. Uh, uh, it says right there that he said in the church, and one of the ministries he said in the church, right beside miracles, right beside gifts of healings, right beside prophets, and right beside apostles, is the ministry of helps. In the ministry of helps, he goes on and asks, are all apostles? Verse 29. What's the answer? No. Everyone's not an apostle, everyone's not a prophet, everyone's not a teacher, everyone doesn't work miracles or have gifts of healings. And then he skips right over to helps and governments. Helps and governments. Skips right over those and goes right into tongues and interpretations. Uh, and, and, and helps and governments. Helps are anything you do to help, anything you do to assist, anything you do to, to uh, cooperate together with the vision of God in your local church, anything and everything you do. Governing, that, that's an oversight responsibility. That's all it is. Governing is an oversight responsibility. That means we have an entire ushering ministry, and, and, and you're the, what we call the head usher or the lead usher. You, you've got more responsibility than any of the other ushers. Uh, we've got three couples that are executive deacon and deaconess. Executive just means greater level of responsibility and oversight. Oversight. We've got elders. They are overseers, overseers of the spiritual things in nature and, uh, and, and uh, items of the flock, areas of the, uh, uh, of the church. Uh, but anyone can serve in those areas. Anyone can serve in those areas. Anyone can serve in the ministry of helps. Anyone can aspire to be a, to be a leader, to be an overseer. That's what Titus chapter 3 says. If man desires the office of bishop, that's an overseer, he desires a good work. He desi you can desire that. Mm -hmm. uh, and so anyone and everyone has a ministry. Now, remember what I said uh, earlier about the tithe? The tithe was God's will, whether I tithed or not. The tithe was God's plan, whether I tithed or not. 
everyone has the opportunity to serve in the Ministry of Helps. And that doesn't mean, well, if I take it, then I'm in the Ministry of Helps, and if I don't take the opportunity, then I'm not. No, that's not what it means. It's God's will for you to be in the Ministry of Helps. Whether you ever step into it or not, it's completely up to you. But it's God's will that everyone serve in the Ministry of Helps in some aspect, in some duty, in some responsibility, in some place. I don't care if it's chopping wood and carrying water. Just give me a place to serve. I don't care if it's holding a door open. Just give me an opportunity to serve. Don't need a title. Don't need a reserve parking place. I don't need a, I don't need a little plaque on a door somewhere. I don't need a business card. I just want to serve. And that was the heart of the first people we see serving in what we call now the ministry of helps. Let me show you a real interesting verse here. Acts chapter 27. The Lord just brought this to my attention uh, uh, just uh, as I was sitting in a service. Nobody mentioned it. Nobody preached on it. Nobody. The Lord will do that to you sometimes. You know that? Yeah. And this is where Paul and his traveling companions on the boat are really getting, the, 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 the hurricane is raging. Uh, I mean, this thing, wasn't that something? This most recent hurricane, Dorian. And how that thing was moving, it was moving like five miles an hour, and it slowed down to three miles an hour, then it slowed down to two miles an hour, then it was moving one mile an hour. 180, degree, 180 mile an hour sustained winds gust to 220. And it was only moving one mile an hour, sat right over top of the islands that we know as the Bahamas, and just sat there. And, and 180 mile an hour wind, like an F5 hurricane, or excuse me, an F5 tornado, and it doesn't just blow through in 20 seconds and done. It just sat on top of them for day after day after day after day. And it only stayed there three days. Paul was in one of those for 14. Paul was in one of those storms, Eurachlodon it's called in their tongue, and, it's, and, it's, and it says right there, 14 days, and they couldn't get out of it. They could not escape that storm. It sat right on top of them. It ripped the, they couldn't put the sails up, rip, rip the thing to shreds, tear the boat apart, and, and, and rip the mast off. Uh, and, and, and everyone gave up hope. Everyone quit. Everyone said, there, there's no salvation. There's no help. There's no hope. It says at the end of verse 20, all hope that we should be saved. All hope that we should be saved was taken away. They quit eating. They threw all the food overboard. We're going to die anyway. We want food on board for. They all died. But when that storm started, verse 14, not long after there arose against it a tempestuous wind called Eurachlodon. And when the ship was caught and we could not bear up in the wind, we let her go. Just let it drive. And running up under a certain island, which is called Clauda, we had much work to come by the boat. I mean, we had to everything, just to keep the boat from coming apart. And it said in verse 17, and when they'd taken up, they used helps undergirding the ship and fearing lest they should fall into a quicksand, struck sail, and so were driven. And we were exceedingly tossed by a tempest. And the next day we lightened the ship. The third day we cast out with our own hands the tackling of the ship and, and, and on and on and on. Did you see it there? Did you see it in verse 17? See, the thing that held the whole boat together was helps. And that's exactly the way it is in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ today. It's the thing that holds the whole boat together. Now, now I, I, uh, I, I, I heard or read after, I, it was a, I, I don't recall if I, I read it in print or someone else referred it to me, uh, of some people that were out uh, uh, canoeing. And I know some of you canoe. Uh, and and uh, uh, their canoe uh, was caught in, in rapids and, and, and actually split the canoe right down the middle. And I mean, they were way, 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 way back in the wilderness. Nobody knew where they were. And, and they just looked around and said, well, what do we have? Uh, and what they had is they had two ratchet straps. And they had their boat was cracked right down the middle. You know, it wasn't in two pieces, but the whole boat was cracked right down the center at the keel. And so they took those two ratchet straps, and you know they had duct tape. Praise the Lord for duct tape. And they turned their canoe over, and they duct taped the bottom, and they duct taped the inside, and they took those two ratchet straps. Those are helps. That's what helps is. They put those two ratchet straps, and they cranked that canoe, and they, stuck, and they, and they duct taped it inside and out, and they got in, and they said it ran better that way than it had, than it had previous. And so they duct taped their boat back together, and, and they used the ratchet. That's what helps are. That's what helps are. I don't know what they wrapped around the outside, put it on the inside, pulled it tight at what they did, but their ship was coming apart. Their ship was coming apart, and it was helps that kept it together. 
I'm saying, I'm saying by the Spirit of God that, that there are a lot of churches that don't have a ministry of helps. They don't have opportunities for people to serve. They've got people that are hands and feet and noses and eyes and mouths and different functions and could bless, be a blessing. And, and the blessing would be on the people that are serving. That's where the blessing would be. The blessing is give me something to do for the, for the house of my God. Give me something to do for the kingdom of my God. Give me something to do to help with the vision that he put in the house of my God, and I'll help. And I'll help, and if that's what keeps us shipped together, so be it. Praise God. I'm in it to serve the Lord Jesus Christ and work for him and, 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 and do his bidding. Now, go over to Ephesians chapter 4, and, and we've mentioned this. I can tell I'm not going to get very far uh, in all my notes today. Uh, but, but Ephesians chapter 4, and, and maybe then I'll go back to Genesis 14, because that was really my assignment uh, given by the Lord this morning. Uh, uh, Ephesians chapter 4, uh, and, and it says, oh, we better skip over just a couple of verses. One, uh, verse 6, one God, one Father of all, who's above all, through all, and in you all. But unto, like, uh, we have a really strong uh, ministry of helps here at Living Word. Much stronger as I talk around and much stronger than I ask, even churches like this one. Not just, not, not, not churches like some ones that I grew up in or Paula grew up in. You know, they're kind of already established and they've got their, 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 their own way of doing things and their way of functioning and they're never going to change. It's just, it's just the way it's set up. And if you try to get in and do something, you know, it's just like, well, no, you know, you, you, we don't have a place for people to do that. No, 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 we don't, we don't have a place for people to do that. No, 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 we, we, we don't need any help doing that. Um, we're try, we, 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 we're attempting to the greatest of our ability to be set up like 1 Corinthians 12, a body. And, 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 and just say, if you want to serve in this church, uh, if we don't have something for you to do, we'll find something for you to do. Uh, and and, and uh, I'm not making it up. Uh, uh, I've invented departments for people to serve in because they want to serve in the house of their God. And, and, and we put value on certain things and we take value away from certain things. And we say, well, you know, if you play the, the keyboard, you know, you're probably more important than the person that puts that bottle of water by pastor's chair every service. See, nobody knew that somebody did that, did they? But there's a cold bottle of water sitting there every service. Somebody does that. And, and uh, uh, Mark 9, 41 doesn't say anything about playing the keyboard. Mark 9, 41 says nothing about being the, the, the men's group or women's group leader. It says nothing about being the pianist. It says nothing about being the worship and praise director. Mark 9, 41 mentions if you give a cup of cold water in my name. And so, so we've got, we've got audio-video departments, and we've got photography departments, and we've got decorating departments, and, and, and we have work days. Man, I came by here yesterday as my plane landed. We came down here, and, and uh, there, there are people that I would not expect to have dirt on their knees and work gloves on their hands and be pushing a wheelbarrow and smiling as they went by. And one of them looked at me and said, Good morning, Pastor. The Nethanim are on duty. We're here serving. Here we are. We're here serving because we wanted to. Pouring concrete and, and expanding the ministry. For what purpose? To fulfill the vision. Whose vision? Pastor's vision. No, it's not pastor's vision. Pastor doesn't want some playground out there so we can double the size of our daycare. Our daycare director, where'd she go? It's got to be her. No, she don't want it to double. She's happy just the way it is. Leave it alone, pastor. Well, if pastor was in charge, we wouldn't even have one in the first place, let alone leave it alone and not double it. No, 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 no. I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't take charge. I don't take credit. I'm doing my best to follow the Lord Jesus Christ and be involved only in the things. I got an invitation. I mean, the man begged me three services in a row. Please come to Nigeria. Please come to Nigeria. And I smiled and said, I've got somebody right over here. He will come to Nigeria for you. No, 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 I don't want him. I want you. I heard you teach this morning. We need that message in Nigeria. Please come to Nigeria. 
I don't want to go to Nigeria because there's no call. If there had been an excitement, if the Lord would have put his hand on me and said, go to Nigeria, man, there, I, I'd have went. I'd have told you, raise me the money, send me over there, let me be a blessing in Nigeria. But I, my ministry is not in Nigeria. I know what my call is and where my ministry is and what it is he's called us to fulfill and be a part of and, and, and be a blessing to. Uh, and, and I'm doing my best to follow the Lord Jesus Christ in that and need all the help I can get to do it. Amen. Need all the help I can get to do it. That's his vision. His vision is not just you come, just, just come to church here. His vision is that you help me do it. Help me do what he's told me to do. And, and that's, that's the way he gives vision. That's, a, that's exactly what he does with the flock. He gives vision to the leader of the flock, and the rest of the flock, rest of the church, rest of the body, serves and helps, and, 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 and we move together to fulfill that. Thank you. Amen. All right, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 7, but unto... Ephesians 4 and verse 7, but unto... Everyone. Everyone of who? Every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Not just a pastor, not just a prophet, not just the apostle, not just a miracle worker. Every one of us is given grace to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. Every single one of us. Now, I'm going to keep my place there. Actually, I'll just let him put 2 Corinthians 6.1 up on the screen. Now watch this. Be, 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 watch this carefully. 2 Corinthians 6 and verse 1. It says, we then as workers, that's a great word, another word for ministers, we then as workers together with Him. We are working together with God. That's all we're doing in ministry, That's all, and ministry is just another word for serving, service, no matter what you do, no matter what you do, no matter what service you perform, no matter what part you play. You are serving and you are a worker together with God. We just looked at it in 1 Corinthians 3 and verse 9, co-laborers together with Him. We're working together. Working together with Him. We beseech you that you receive not the grace of God in vain. We beseech you that you receive not the grace of God in vain. We just look back at Ephesians 4 and verse 7. It says, every one of us is given grace. Well, what were we given grace for, Pastor? I thought we were saved by grace. I didn't receive the grace of God in vain. Well, what were you saved for? See, most people only focus on what they were saved from. Most people only think about what they were saved from. Saved from hell, saved from sin, forgiven of their past, became a new creature in Christ. Remember what they were saved from? And they never, ever, ever consider what they were saved for. Don't receive the grace of God in vain. You were saved for a purpose. Ephesians 2, 8, and 9 says, You are saved by grace through faith. That not of yourself, that's a gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. But you are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works that he has before ordained that you should walk in. You were saved for a purpose. You were called out. He, he, saw, he sought you out and he pulled you out of darkness and translated you into the kingdom of his dear son for a purpose, that you would work together with him, that you would be co-laborers together with him, that you would be workers together in the vineyard that belongs to him, in the house that belongs to him, in the kingdom that, that is being established for his glory, that you be a worker in that kingdom. That's what you're saved for. He's before ordained that you be a worker and a servant. No one is called in the New Testament church of the Lord Jesus Christ and anointed to do nothing. No one is anointed to do nothing. No one is called to do nothing. Everyone's called to do something. Everyone's called to do something. Now, that something may be on a list. We've got a list of like 95 different departments. And I mean everything from softball coach to, 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 to electronics, uh, to camera operators, to, to singers, uh, to, 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 to musicians, to youth workers, to, I mean, I named like seven or eight right there. We got 95. 95 opportunities for service. And yet there are some, turn over to Luke chapter 8 with me. Real quick, Luke chapter 8, there are some that, uh, that, that we don't even have. We, 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 we don't have a department uh, for prayers, do we? People who pray for their church, people who take a time element every single week or every single day and pray for their church and pray for their church's outreaches and pray for their church's ministry and pray for their church's needs to be met and pray for the anointing in their services. We don't have that, do we? No, we don't have a department that, 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 that's that. That's every believer. That's every believer. Here in Luke chapter 8, and it came to pass afterward 
that he went throughout every city and village preaching and showing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God. And the twelve were with him. And certain women, which had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary Magdalene, out of whom went seven devils, and Joanna, wife of Chusa, Herod's steward. I love this woman. And Susanna and many others which ministered unto him of their substance. They ministered. They had a ministry of giving, of giving. And of course, Joanna is, is just all of our favorite because her husband was Herod's treasurer. She was the one who oversaw all of Herod's money. And, and, and Herod didn't know how much money he had. But Chusa did. Chusa made sure Herod only knew what he wanted him to know. No, he was his bookkeeper. He was Herod's bookkeeper. And so as a Herod's bookkeeper, even if he didn't do anything dishonest, <laughs> even if he didn't skim a little bit off extra for himself, he still got a wage. He still got paid. He's King Herod's bookkeeper, and his wife is a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Bible says she's continually giving to him of her substance, which really is her husband's substance, which really is King Herod's substance. The wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. Huh? This was her ministry. She ministered to him, it says. This was her ministry. There's not a Christian in the whole body of Christ that doesn't have an element of this. You notice there is no special clause or this special place that says, well, this, only, well only she could do that, nobody else could do that. Said so there were a number of women that did it there, Susanna, uh, and that there were others, Mary Magdalene, and, 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 and they just came, and they ministered to him how? They didn't carry chopped wood. They didn't carry water. They didn't row him across the, the, the lake at night. They didn't set people down in numbers 50 and 100. They didn't clean up the, the uh, crumbs after everyone had eaten. They didn't serve out the meals. They didn't prepare the upper room. What did they do? They brought money. It was their ministry. They went out and got it, and they brought it in. Oh, we could just, we could go another hour, not even stop right now, go right into second service, and never leave this subject right here. Just never, ever, ever leave this subject about bringing things and laying them before his feet, about bringing things to the house of God for the purpose of the house of God. Remember, Exodus chapter 35 and into chapter 36, Moses stood up and said, here's the plan of God. Here's the will of God. This is the vision of God that we build a place for his worship. We'll receive your offering. And they, and they went right out and they brought it and they brought it and they brought it and the day after day and they kept bringing it and they kept, and he never said another word, and they kept bringing it and they kept bringing it. That was their ministry. That was their ministry. Go to work tomorrow morning and think, I, I, I'm, I'm in my ministry right now. Part of what I do here is be a light of the world and salt of the earth. Part of what I do here is be an example of Christianity, Christian love, and Christian faith. Part of what I do here is witness, and when I have an opportunity, use words to do so. And part of what I do here is extract money and take it to God and lay it at the feet of the apostles for distribution as they see fit by God's direction. That, 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 that's, your, that's, your, that's your Bible plan. We, we could preach it out of the book of Exodus. We could preach it out of the book of Acts. We could preach it out of Genesis. We could preach it out of Revelation. We could preach it everywhere in between. That's part of the ministry. Now go back with me, because my time is just about gone, to Genesis chapter 14. Genesis chapter 14. Now I know it's beyond just about gone. It really is gone, but we're going to preach this anyway. If you're there, say I'm there. Now, you know this story. We've shared this story so many times, uh, and, and it, is, it is a great story. It's, a, it's just a favorite of mine. In this, in this uh, uh, chapter, there are four kings, and, and they're named in verse 1. In, in the days of Amraphel, king of Shinar, Arioch, king of Alisar, Chedileomer, king of Elam, and Tidal, king of nations. And these made war with Bera, king of Sodom, with Bersha, 
king of Gomorrah, with Shinab, king of Adma, with and, and it names all of these all these different kings. And, and all these were joined together, and, 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 and they defeated all of them. They defeated all of them. And, and in the 14th year, verse 5, Chedalamer and the kings that were with him smote Rephaim and Zuzim and Emim and the Horhites and the Amalekites and the Amorites and, 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 and all of them. And, and in total, in total, they had, they had smote 11 different nations. They had conquered 11 nations. And, and what happened was they, 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 they conquered seven of them, and finally, the, uh, or six of them, and finally the last five said, we better all get together. We better all confederate together. And five kingdoms came together, and they defeated all five of them at the same time. They defeated six nations, and then they defeated, de defeated five more at the same time all together. And they made one fatal mistake. They took two of Abraham's friends. They took two of Abraham's friends. Now, if you ever learn this, if you ever learn this, uh, you'll never have another bad day the whole rest of your life. Abraham was in covenant with God. Abraham, he didn't play church. He didn't go to a place of worship a couple times a week. He didn't read his Bible and call himself a Christian. Abraham was in covenant with the Most High God. And when Abraham decided and went home and said to all of his household help, you're going with me. And they took out after those kings. He didn't even pray about it. He didn't ask God for help. He didn't call on the name of the Lord. He didn't say, you know I'm dependent on you. He didn't quote three different verses on God fights my battles for me. He didn't remind him that his name is Jehovah Nissi. Waver of the banner of victory over me. He did not say one time, my God always causes me to triumph and no weapon formed against me shall prosper. He didn't say anything. He just armed him up and went. God was obligated to help him. You look at it any other way you want, our God had to help him because he was in covenant with him. And he could not stand by and watch. He could not stand off on the sidelines. There are people who are in covenant with God, and God will move heaven and earth, send an angel to him, manifest in a pillar of fire, go stand in the fire and walk through it with him. They don't even have to pray. And God will help them in everything they do. And he was in covenant with God. I just thought I'd throw that in for your benefit. He was in covenant with God, and he heard. That's all we read in our Bible. He heard that two of his covenant friends were taken captive and his nephew, Lot. And when Abraham heard, verse 14, that his nephew, Lot, had been taken captive, he armed his trained servants, born in his own house, 318, and he pursued them unto the region of Dan. <coughs> and he divided himself against them, he and his servants, by night. And he smote them, and he pursued them unto Hobah, which is left of Damascus. And he brought back all the goods, and brought back his nephew Lot, and all of his goods, and the women also, <coughs> and all the people. And all the people. He brought them all back. He brought every one of them back. He conquered all four of those king's armies in one night. In one night. And when the sun came up, he was still chasing them. I imagine he had to call those men back and say, hey, guys, hey, 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 come on, come on, come on, that's enough. That's enough. And, and, and they weren't content just to, just to defeat him. They turned tail and ran. Well, that wasn't enough. So they're running. So what? We're going to keep chasing them. We're gonna, and they chased him, and then finally he just called them all in. And, and they won this great victory. Not one of those trained servants, not one of his household help, not one of his landscapers, not one of his cooks, not one of his workers in the field, not one of them were related to that boy Lot. None of them were in covenant with those other two friends that were taken captive. Not one of them. They were in Abraham's house. And Abraham had trained him. And when Abraham went to war, they went to war with him. 
Now, we've taken a lot of things out of this chapter. But I sure hope you see what I see out of this chapter this morning. Abraham had an army, even though they wouldn't have been identified as an army. Abraham had an army, and they might not even identify themselves as an army. They were all the people that helped in his house. They were all the people that helped in his house. And when Abraham went to war, they didn't sit back at their house and say, oh, this isn't my fight. Pastor got himself into that, let him beat himself out. He armed them, and they went to war with him. They were his army. And when the war started, and it was the only one we ever see Abraham in, he had 318, and all 318 went with him. He didn't have 318, and 312 went with him. He didn't have 318, and 297 went with him. He didn't have 318, and 150 went with him. He had 318 servants in his house, and when he said, it's time for us to go to war, they went with him. <clears throat> After they'd had a good night's sleep and a hot meal, no, he just said, here's what we're going to do. And they all jumped up. He armed them. And they went out with him. And he divided them and said, you're going to serve here, and you're going to go after that one, and you're going to take the left flank, and you're going to take the right, and you're going to go right down the middle. And when the morning broke, all of the enemies were defeated. And they brought back everyone who had been taken captive and all their stuff. Everybody. Every pastor in America has an army. And everyone in that army is called to go to war with him. Receive their training from him and get into the spiritual battle of their time to win their city, to impact their region, to, 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 to affect the gates of the city, to, to affect the leadership of their city, to, in our case, to, to, to be impactful to the people who are ministers of God and, and, and men and women in the arena of law enforcement. That's just our assignment. You didn't ask for it. I didn't ask for it. Our assignment stretches us to every continent of the globe through missionaries, two of whom will be with us here on Wednesday night. Our assignment is to evangelize and win the lost and be impactful. Our assignment is to broadcast on television and every avenue of social media we can find worldwide. And didn't ask for any of those. It'd be so nice just to have a nice church and a nice church family and, and have nice services and have quality praise and worship and a comfortable building and great acoustics. That would be nice. Um, oh, it'd be nice. But that's not what we're called to. That, 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 that's not the war that we're, we, we've been thrust into. And we've been thrust into it together. Now, next week, I'll go on and I'll do part two of this. Uh, and and, and uh, I want you to be here. Don't let that, don't let that scare you. Huh? Uh, I want to talk to you about your ministry. I want to talk to you about how to fulfill it. I want to talk to you about how not to lose your reward. I'll show you three verses in your Bible that says you can work for and earn a reward and still lose it. The Bible says so. You don't want to do that. And that reward is for your ministry for your ministry. You have a work to do. I mean, this was such a great message for me when I first heard it because I wasn't a pastor. I didn't have a pulpit ministry. I wasn't teaching and preaching and leading God's people, some of the finest in the whole planet. I, I, I just knew in my heart, I just wanted to do something for the Lord. I didn't want to be a sub that never got put in. I, I, I didn't want to be. When I was in seventh grade, uh, uh, we, we were in a church basketball league, and, and we won the whole city championship uh, that was actually a county championship in Stevenson County, Illinois. And I started when I was in fifth grade, and I started when I was in sixth grade, and, and, and uh, still remember I had 18 points one night and starting guard. Then I went into seventh grade. And, and let, me, let me demonstrate to you what, what I did most in seventh grade. sat on the bench, the bench, and boy, the whole year, the whole year, because there was no breakup. I mean, these were seniors in high school, 
and you were in seventh grade. And, and you know, you went from here to here to here to here to here. Because you were never going to get in. Forget it. And I felt like that. I felt like that in church. I felt like, you know, there were just a few people who could do a few things in God's house. And there was no chance for me to ever do anything in God's house. There, there, there wasn't any chance whatsoever. I remember the church Pat Paul and I got married in, and, and they came out and they said, we're building a new sanctuary. And boy, I was going to show up with a hammer and a saw and, and a couple extension cords. And they said, we've got some rooms in the basement that need painting. Painting. I hate painting. But when I heard that, man, I showed up on Saturday. I don't know anything about painting. That's okay. Just slap it on the wall. So I did. Big cement block walls and just I painted those things white. And I remember, I remember going down in that basement and, and it was kind of around the corner of the steps. You couldn't even get there, hardly by, by on purpose. You couldn't get there by accident. Just this one back room. And I just look at that room and think, I painted that room. I painted that room. When Paul and I got married, we, we had our reception in the church basement and walked down those steps. And I remember looking back at that room and, and my heart swelling because I painted that room. I don't know how many times they painted it since, but I painted that room. And what's that about? Is that pride? No, nobody knew I painted that room. Nobody knew. Nobody knows to this day who painted that room for the first time. No, it was about I got to do something in the house of my God. They found something, and, and nobody else wanted to do it. And, and I showed up on a Saturday morning, and, and I got to do something for the Lord. I got all done. I got all cleaned up, you know, best I could. Uh, and, and, and I got to walk out, and I got to look up, and I, and I just knew I, I did something for the Lord. I did something. Now, I just want to clarify something. I never did fall asleep on the bench. <laughs> what happened was one day... Our team was so far ahead, the coach looked down and said, Clements! <laughs> Me? Your name is Clements, right? Uh-huh. You're the only Clements on our team? Yeah. Then I guess I mean you. Yes, sir. Go in the game. Really? Really? That's the way I was with, with helping at, at, at my church. If I could hold the door open, if I could carry something for somebody, just anything. I got to go in. I even got to touch the ball. I did. They passed it to me one time. <laughs> they did. I was standing right on this side of the, of the, of the, of the free throw line, and, and, and the circle was right, and they threw me the ball. And you want to know what I did with it? I, I put it right through the hoop is what I did. That's what I was in there for. You're not going to give me the ball and get no productivity out of me. On. Took one shot, made it 100%. Yeah. And then I got pulled out. Somebody else went in. I got to play. I got to do something for my team. I still have never forgot it. I can tell you where that ball hit on the rim, how it bounced up and hit the backboard, how it came back and hit the rim, how it spun and went right through the hoop. And I went, <laughs> boy, I still come to church, and I'm still looking for things to do. I don't care if it's straightened, picking up. I don't care if it's helping people, holding a person's hand, shaking hands, greeting. It, do, it doesn't matter. I'm still just as enthused and excited and happy to serve in the house of God as I've ever been. Hope you are. Hope you are. Thank you for watching The Word of the Lord, a weekly television broadcast of Living Word Christian Church. Living Word Christian Church welcomes you to join us at 2015 Ward Avenue in La Crosse, Wisconsin. Sunday mornings at 8.15 and 10.30, and Wednesday evenings at 7. For more information on Living Word Christian Church, visit us on the web at lwcclax.com.